when you put your trust in Him, He begins to do it. Sometimes He does it instantly. Sometimes He waits to see if you're going to waver. Well, <laughs> uh, James 5 said if you waver, you don't expect anything from God. I feel the Holy Ghost. He loves me, he loves me not. It's wavering. He loves me, he loves me. You ain't getting nowhere. That's good. Matter of fact, you're killing the vine, picking all them leaves off. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus, today. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost can settle you. He has set me up upon a rock, the Bible says. He's established my goings. I don't believe it's the will of God for us to be on an emotional roller coaster. Up and down. Well, praise God. I just don't believe it. I don't believe for one minute. Sister Jimmy, that God wants us up and down, in and out. Oh, I believe he can. I believe he will. Oh, I don't know if he's going to. I don't know if he can. Now, nah, you're out of the will of God by talking that way. You have just defeated everything. That, well, praise God. You stand firm upon the word of God. If God gave a promise, come on, he keeps his promises. Hallelujah. Come on, we got to stand upon the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said that he gave us authority and power over all of the work of the enemy. Come on, they had nothing can hurt us. Do you believe that today? There's no foe that can defeat us. All right, come on. Have you ever felt like you've been defeated by the devil? Praise God. Did you know if you're submitted to God, that's impossible? I, I'm not trying to be controversial here today, but I am trying to set you aright. If you're submitted to God, the devil cannot win. Oh, hallelujah. What, what did the Bible say, Isaiah 9 and 6? For unto us, huh? A child is born unto us, a son is given. And, but what does it say about his name? His name shall be called Wonderful. Now, we can go through all of these, couldn't we? But we're, we, we don't have... I ain't even got to my message this morning. I feel the Holy Ghost. I may not get to that message. Amen. I, this, is, this is the message. Praise God. Ain't nothing in that Bible says what's written down. I, I, what I write in my notes is what I got to preach. I'm going to follow the Holy Ghost today. His name shall be called Wonderful. You know what Wonderful means? That's amazing. Things you don't understand. Glorious, majestic, it's too wonderful. You don't, it don't make sense to, it's so amazing, it's wonderful is what it is. Marvelous, wonderful counselor, counselor. You know what, Brother Ron, this counselor that I'm talking about, he don't prescribe Ritalin. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. This counselor that I'm talking about can talk to you and it makes sense. This counselor that I'm talking about can spell it out for you and everything looks like it's just going to work out. Praise God. I'm telling you what this counselor make you walk away feeling a whole lot better about the situation. 
This counselor that I'm talking about. Come on, wonderful counselor. Anybody else? Come on, what's the next one? The mighty God. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I said I wasn't going to go through them all. <laughs> He's a mighty God. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to let you think about it for a minute. Mighty God. But Joy, he's not a statue sitting in someone's house. He's not a picture on the wall. That, that thing right there on the wall, that's just two pieces of wood. You know what that is? That's decoration. They ain't got, there's no anointing in that. It references something. It stands for something. But I'm telling you, they, they, God is not on that anymore. You don't look at this. Well, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. We got a mighty God. Come on. Come on. Yes, he is. The one that just touched your body. Yes. Come on, the one that touched your body back there. Right. The one that touched your body. On. The one that touched your body. Woo. The one that touched your body yes. and your body. Come on. Come on, he's a healer. He's a redeemer. He's a savior. But he's a mighty God. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Wonderful counselor, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Everlasting. Everlasting Father. You know what? You don't you don't you don't lack for anything when you've got a father like we got. That's what fathers do, don't they? They provide. They provide security. They, they provide strength. They, they provide stability. Amen. Come on. They, they, <laughs> well, they provide substance. A way to sustain you. They, they provide warmth. They provide a shelter. Come on, they provide a safe place. I'm talking about a father. That's a real father. Not somebody that'll come and go and leave you alone and neglect you and self-centered and self-willed. Praise God. Everlasting father. Hallelujah. What's the next one? Prince of Peace. You know what? You can be you can be right going plumb crazy insane the whole world falling. You can be pulling your hair out screaming like ah, and God step in and you'll back away and settle down. Mm -hmm. All right. You know what you'll do? You'll you'll quieten down and you'll get over and sit and, and you'll just you'll just wait. You'll just wait your turn. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's no, there's no chaos in the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, but my mind's in turmoil. You know what? You ain't got no peace. Come on, you got no peace. What are you saying, Brother Smith? I'm not right with God. I'm not saved. I don't have the Holy Ghost. My prayers ain't been. I'm saying you don't got any peace. Hallelujah. Because there's something else more important to you. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. The peace of God is not as important to you as what that other thing is. <laughs> hallelujah. Come on. That self-will is more important. Uh, that what I want uh, and how I want it to be and how I want to think uh, and how I want to do. Uh, and it's all chaos until I get my way. Come on. There's no peace. Hallelujah, I feel what I'm saying in the Holy Ghost this morning. When we get in the presence of God, we bow down. When we get in the presence of God, we're not arrogant anymore. When we get in the presence of God, we're not haughty anymore. When we get in the presence of God, we don't know it all anymore. Hallelujah, when we get in the presence of God, our experience and our know-all, come on, it goes away. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Yeah, come on. Come on, Mr. Universe. Stronger than anybody in the world. Get in the presence of God. And you're like a, you're like a wet noodle. All right. Oh, hallelujah. I feel what I'm saying in the Holy Ghost. There is no boldness in the presence of God. But God did say, come boldly before the throne of grace. You got to know what you're going after. But when you get there, Holy Ghost, help me. I can't make it without you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what some men will do? They'll put, oh, nasty old tattoos all over their body. Come on, skull pictures here. Amen. The, the filthiest language over here. You know what? All these, all these pictures all over their face, they're trying to be a tough guy. Right. They're trying to be arrogant. Right. They're trying to be intimidating. Yeah. But you know what? You get in the presence of God. Whew. You know what? You, you, you think old Adolf Hitler was the most evil? Come on, he was just doing a little bit of what the devil is. Do you know anything in the whole universe that is more evil than Satan? That is more dark than Satan? Satan. Do you know anything that is more wicked than Satan? You don't know nothing stronger and more wicked than the, the sin that Satan is. And yet that, that, that creation, that creature, that whatever you want to call him, is going to bow and tremble in the presence of God. The Bible said in the presence of God, the mountains, they, they tremble and shake. It ain't because God's up there stomping his feet on the mountain. It's just they can't handle it. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on. And there's smoke and billowing. Amen. And the children of Israel, they said, Moses, we can't handle it. You, you cannot bow up. When everybody gets in the presence of God, he takes precedence. What he says goes. What he thinks is the right thing. Let every man be a liar and God be true. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The prince, the prince of peace. Got up on the front of that boat and the winds and the waves, man. Contrary. Peace. I know the peace speaker. Do you know him? Or are you just acquainted with him? Well, there's a difference between walking with God and just being conveniently located somewhere in the vicinity of God. Right. Says, Winnie, I know so many scriptures. Surely I'll be saved. I have actually prayed for folks and God answered my prayer. Surely I'll be saved. Not if you don't walk with God. God has spoken to me before. He'll always speak to me. Not necessarily. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Woo. Come on, you know what? I, God has used me to he, heal people with these hands, as crippled as I am. But yet I have missed God at times and I had to go back to square one and say, where did I miss it? How to mess up? What went wrong? You know what it was? My old flesh got in the way. Right. What I wanted, I thought God wanted. What I wanted, I thought God wanted, so I spoke it that way. Yeah. Yeah. And it didn't come to pass. Amen. God wasn't in it. You know why? Because there's too much of me in it. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Brother Joy, this is why people don't have peace. Come on, the prince of peace, because there's no subjugation to God. The Bible said, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Yeah. But that ain't all it says. Come on, that's not all it says. When the devil ain't running from you, there's a reason why he's not running. All right. 
Hallelujah. The Bible said, submit yourself therefore to God. Submit yourself therefore to God. Submit yourself therefore to God. Come on somebody. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. If you don't submit to God, the devil's not going anywhere. Hallelujah. He's going to hang around to torment you. Well, Brother Smith, you tell me what I'm doing. I'm not going to do it because you already know. You ain't going to fool God by saying, I didn't know. Yes, you did. Because God already dealt with you before a man of God ever gets involved with you. Well, praise God. Woo! You ever had that feeling? I know I shouldn't be doing this, but... Oh, this don't, man, this don't feel right, but don't you tell me you are submitted to God when you know, well, praise God. I know this is different here today. Amen. I'm just telling you, God wants to move in our midst. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. God wants to move in our midst. Hallelujah. God wants to heal our bodies completely. God wants to put peace in our homes completely. Amen. God wants to work in this church like you've never seen before. But you know what he's waiting for? He's waiting for a willing vessel. He's waiting for a willing vessel. Come on, God, do what you want to do. I'll change what I need to change. Come on, I'll be what you want me to be. Come on, folks, we're getting ready for revival and the man of God that's coming. Uh, oh, come on. Uh, he's well capable of obeying the Holy Ghost. Uh, and you better be right with God. You better be submitted to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody told me, Brother Smith, you're too nice, you're too kind. Well, I thought, you know, ain't you supposed to be nice? Aren't you supposed to be kind? Yeah, you are. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Anybody ever spanked your child? Anybody ever put your child in timeout? Anybody ever put his nose in the corner? That's mean. That's cruel. They don't like it. Sister Harrington, it don't feel good. It's got to be, it's got to be ugly. It's got to be, oh, we don't want to do that. You don't want them in that corner. No more than they want to be there. But you know why they're there, don't you? You know exactly why they're there. And you've told them, don't you play games with me. You know why you're in the corner. Every one of you have said it. Every one of you have said it. Don't you toy with me. You know why you're in trouble. You know why you're grounded. Do you know why I'm spanking you? Have we not said this? Yeah, absolutely. Amen. And so we, out of love for our children, we correct them. Amen. I don't think any pastor in any church, I'm going to wait till you're all listening. I don't think any pastor in any church should have to worry about the look on your face. Should have to worry about how you're going to take it. Come on. When there's correction that has to be done. Praise God. 
When your child gets rebellious and unruly, you'll bring them to the pastor to, for the pastor to tell them, Son, now you know you're out of the will of God. This is what the Bible says. And the parent will say, Amen, Amen, Amen. And expect that child to take heed to the word of God. Yeah? Amen. I don't think any pastor should have to worry about something he preaches is going to hurt somebody's feelings. Praise God. Well, where'd all the amens go? I should open my eyes. Is that what you want? Amen. That I need to open my eyes. Quit closing my eyes. I tell you what, I'm just falling out the Holy Ghost. I'm not closing my eyes because I'm scared of you. Amen. But I am trying to tell you that God can't do what he wants to do. He can't be the wonderful, the counselor, the mighty God to you. If you got other things on your mind, if you got a different agenda, when God said walk this way, but you want to walk this way. Hey, God, it don't matter, God, because I'm going to meet up with you over here at this intersection. No, you're not. You don't even know where the path you're going takes you. What's that poem by Robert Frost? I'll think of it in a minute. Where the fork in the road, he said. Which path do I take? Amen. I'm going to close my eyes again. I can see better this way. How many be honest? Pastor, I've been in control when God should have been. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. The reason I'm having trouble is because I'm in control where God should where God should be. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. They've got, you got to be full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, come on, that cup is half empty. It's, it's liable to be filled with junk. Amen. You can't have good and bad. Uh, come on, you can't pour new wine in old bottle or old wine in new bottles. Amen. Come on, you can't. Come on, God made this very clear. Uh, hallelujah. It's God's way or no way. Uh, come on, the, any other way is going to lead to destruction. Praise God any other way. I'm telling you today, if you're going to walk with God, put it in your mind to do nothing else. Amen. God is a jealous God. And the Bible said, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Amen. If the righteous scarcely be saved. Amen. You know what that means? You're barely going to make it as it is. You don't have time to have your own way. You don't have time to be arrogant. You don't have time to be bold and cocky. Come on. You got to submit to the will of God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody said, well, Brother Smith, I don't see it the way you see it. Then why on God's green earth are you here? Brother Smith, that's a little too bold, don't you think? No, it makes perfect sense. Sister Sue, if you don't see it the way I see it, and I'm the pastor of this church, you're going to cause chaos. You're going to cause confusion. You know what you're going to do? You're going to go find somebody else that you can talk to that will side with you. Naturally, because we all want buddies. Woo! When there's another church down the road that believes like you do. Now, you're free to go, but I will pray and I will hope it's between you and God that if you're not right, God have mercy on your soul. If you are right, no worries. Praise God. Is this right? Amen. She knows I'm just using her as an example. Amen. Sister Wendy, it don't, it don't work to come into a place. You, you, you know this from working at jobs. You can't go in there and rewrite the books. 
you got to go in there and submit yourself to their regulations. Even though you don't like them. Even though they don't make sense. Even though, you know what, you're not really helping somebody like you feel like you could. You got to do it their way. Well, praise God. If you had a pastor like you want him and she got a pastor like she wants and he's got a pastor like he wants, man, we'd have four, five, six, seven pastors in here. Anything with more than one head is called a what? A freak. Amen. So I'm going to say it. If you can't line up to the word of God that's preached to you, you're in the wrong place. You're in the right place, but, but you're in the wrong place, if I can say it that way. I don't feel like you need to go anywhere. But, well, praise God. You know what you ought to be doing, Brother Smith? Can I come into your office? I got to talk to you. I want to make sure I'm lined up to the word of God the way you preach it. Right. Hallelujah. Right. What are you saying, Brother Smith? We should just follow you anyway and how anyway? Go read the Bible. That's what the Bible says. Well, what if you're doing wrong? What if you're, well, well we have some police officers around here that can watch. My spirit will be wrong. I'll begin to integrate things into this house that ain't right. Come on, it don't take a rocket scientist to know when somebody's carnal. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. All right. All right. Sister Wendy, you know what I, I don't do with my money? I don't go to the casino. Right. Yeah. I don't drink beer. Right. I don't smoke cigarettes. Right. I preach against those things. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I can't, I, I, can't, I can't go without it. Yes, you can. Pray about it. Yes. Get a hold of God. Submit yourself to God. You, yes. He'll help you. Yes. Well, I can't, I, can't, I, I can't stop lying. Yes, you can. Just don't open your mouth. Yes. I can't stop stealing. Stay home. Well... I got another 10 minutes before we usually close. Is this all right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm not, Sister Ronnie, I'm not always just coming to this house to see how hard I can preach it. But you know what? When there's things rising up against me, I got to preach against it. Right. When there's attitudes and spirits that ain't right in the church, come on, we got to get rid of it. Amen. Amen. Brother Joy, if I see you going to the casino, you're in trouble. It's not a right place to be. You shouldn't be going there. You got the Holy Ghost. It's not a place for someone with the Holy Ghost to be. Amen. Well, praise God. If I find out you've got things on your computer that ought not be, you're in trouble with your man of God and with God. Right. And this makes sense? Yeah. Amen. If you got video games that's ungodly, come on, get rid of them. Praise the Lord. If you got friends that's teaching you how to cuss and tell filthy jokes, change friends. Come on, this is common sense. It ain't me trying to be your Lord or your God or your boss or your owner. I'm trying to make sure you're going to heaven. Yeah. When we all get to heaven. If I see jewelry or I see makeup or I see all of these things that make you look like what the Bible describes as Jezebel. It's in here. It's in here. Come on. It's in here. It is in here verbatim, word for word. It even uses the word jewelry and rings and earrings. It even says a painted face. In here. Come on. Well, what are you going to do, Brother Smith, when some man comes in here and gets the Holy Ghost and you see on his arm he's got a tattoo? You got to kick him out? No. You leave it alone. It was there before ever God got started with him. Matter of fact, some people put tattoos on their bodies thinking that they're in the will of God. It's a cross or it's a fish or it's a scripture. But they've never read Deuteronomy 19. Leave them alone. Yeah. Leave them alone. Yeah. Well, praise God. Praise Woo. 
talking to my dad on the phone the other day. Is this all right? Yes. Y'all ready to go home? No. No. Come on. I, I know some of y'all get so uh, twisted up when I carry on, you see. I mean, I've seen folks yawning, looking at the clock. I mean, it's rude. Yeah. Right. Well, praise God. Amen. Especially when God's trying to help somebody. Right. I'm talking to my dad on the phone. Dad, how's it going, man? Woo, man, we, we went down through the list. Everybody doing okay? He said, hey, help me. I, 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 I've been fighting some demons. I know what he's talking about because I know his past. And he said, you know what, son? There's things you may not know about me. Probably so, Dad. He said, you, you wouldn't know it. I got a tattoo. <laughs> no, nope, Dad, I didn't know it. Surprise me. He said, I keep it covered. Went to describe it. Amen. Man's never had the Holy Ghost, never been baptized in Jesus' name. If that man comes to this altar and gets the Holy Ghost and I baptize him out there, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave that tattoo alone. Because God is leaving it alone. God doesn't require someone to go get it burned off or erased. Amen. Well, praise God. At least not that I know of. Hello? I wouldn't want anybody judging him because he doesn't measure up. God's the one doing the measuring. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what I don't you know what else I don't believe in? Having children out of wedlock. But what am I gonna do, Sister Jimmy, when people come in here that's got children from four different men? Well, praise God. Ron, I tell you what, I, my mom would be in trouble today. None of my siblings have the same daddy. But you know what? I believe she went to heaven yeah. because she, because she came to the altar and submitted herself to God. All of that other stuff is in the past. Right. You can't live in the past. That's right. Amen. But if the, if you're going to make it into the future with God, you got to be obedient to Him. Amen. You know what that means, brother Joey? It don't matter how many tattoos you've had from past. Walking forward with God, we're not going to put any more on. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't care how many husbands or wives you had. When you get in church, you walk with God. Amen. Stay with the one you got. Hallelujah. Is this all right? Yes. Amen. You can't have the God of peace. If you're going to have your own thing. So you go ahead and wrestle and fight. Kick and scream. Make threats. Say it however you want to. As soon as you submit to God. Whew, the peace will settle in. You know why? Because you know that you're doing what God wants. And God's got his favor on you. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Oh, uh, yeah, well, mm -mm -mm. I don't know, I, I, just, I just feel it here today, I feel it rising up, amen, if we'll just submit to God, amen, everything will be all right, everything will be all right, you know what my mom said? Son, I'm dying with this cancer. I already know it. I can tell in my body that there's nothing else the doctors can do. Sister Wendy, I don't know how they can tell, but they just can. I don't know how it is an older person can say, like my grandmother did, Children, listen to me. I will not have another birthday. Oh yeah, Grandma, you're going to live to be 100. No, you listen to me. I'm getting ready to go. 
How do they know? You know what? It was exactly like she said. You know what? She had the strength the day before she died. She got up out of that bed on her own volition, on her own strength, and went into the bathroom and took a shower with no help, with nothing. I mean, nurses is hollering, hey, why didn't you pull the string? Why didn't you light the door? No, I can do what I want, she said. And lay down in the same bed and say, see y'all later. You know why? She made peace with it in her mind. Not just like my mother did. She made peace with it. You know what? She got right with God and said, God, whatever you want me to do. You know what God had her doing, Brother James? Come on, the weeks before she died, she was on that phone. Hey, brother, will you forgive me for that? And she named it way back then, years ago. I did this and that. Will you forgive me? Yeah, thank you, click. Call the next one. Hey, I just remembered I didn't do this right to you. I said this and this. Will you forgive me? Click. Hey, thank. This is what God had her doing. <laughs> you know what it was? She wanted to be right with man and with God. I don't think there's a problem with that. And when you can do that, there's a peace that settles in on you. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm closing right now. I, I'm done. But I want you to know something. You cannot have peace without being subject to God. And if you don't know how to be subject to God, then I guess you need to come talk to me and we can talk through some things. Praise God. But don't be upset when I start naming it. That's why you're not going to come to me because you don't want it to be named. Then you know what that tells me? You already know. Hello? You already know it. Don't, don't come in here with, it's everybody else's fault. I didn't do nothing wrong. Poor me, poor me. You know what? That's what narcissists do. Hello? You can't come to this altar as a narcissist to God and say, God, I really didn't do it. That really wasn't me. I don't have any sin, God. It's everybody else. If, it, if, if the devil made me do it. Yeah. It don't work with God. You know what you do? You get in the presence of God. You, you, you start trying to get rid of things that, oh, God, I don't want him to be upset with me. Get, get that away from me, God. I don't, that wasn't me, God. I don't have that anymore. You know why? Because you know it ain't right. How many saw their child? You come into the room, they go to hide in those hands. You think, what's, what's going on? What you got in those hands? Something they know they oughtn't to have. And then you open those hands and it's one of your little pretties that, that go on the shelf. Your little knickknacks. Now, little Susie, I told you not to pull that off, didn't I? You know you're not supposed to have that, right? What are they going to do? They're going to hide it. They don't want you to know. This is what you do when it, you get in the presence of God. You start trying to cover up and hide and make And you want to show the best part of you to God. You go into the courtroom and you put your best face on. Right? Don't, hey, ain't this right? Yeah. Well, hallelujah. It's the same with God. You don't have any. You got, if you, what do you have if you don't have peace? You have turmoil. You have chaos. You have confusion. And what you need to do is submit to God. Let's, let's stand here today. I feel, I feel like I have obeyed God. I feel like I was right in the middle of the will of God today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. Uh, come on, I preached on some things here today that maybe you don't understand. If you don't understand what I was talking about when I talked about the casino, come talk to me. It ain't a good place to be. Come on, if you don't understand about the jewelry or the makeup, come talk to me. We'll, we'll, we'll explain it to you. I'll give you scriptures. Uh, come on, I'm not just making this up as I go. What we got to do is submit to God. Uh, I also preach against rock music and beer drinking songs. And, and well, praise God. Hallelujah. 
Jesus, help us today. Lord, would you help us today to submit to your will? God, would you bring peace? Come on, where there was no peace. Hallelujah. God, I know you want to heal and to deliver. But God, you also want to shed your peace. Lord, you said, my peace I give you, not as the world giveth. Amen. Give I unto you. Amen. But you know what he's talking about? It's that peace that comes with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let's love him right now. Amen. Let's begin to talk to the Lord. Oh, yeah. All across this house. Every child, every man, every woman right now. God, we need your spirit in our life. Uh, hallelujah. 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 Come on. You know what I'm talking about today and you know it's the truth. Uh, amen. If you're not submitted to God, I'm asking you to start that submission process right now. Amen. Uh, nobody's hating on you. Nobody's being mean or ugly to you. We're just talking to you and letting you know why God has pulled his hand back or taken his favor off. Uh, amen. Because there is no submission. Come on, let's submit to God and get rid of our arrogant, haughty spirit. Uh, let's submit to God and let him have his way and not our own. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise God. Praise God. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, God. Have your way in me. Have your way in me. Have your way in me, Lord. Lord, do what you want to do as long as you want to. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, God. Mm, I praise you. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I praise you, God. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. God, do the work right now, God. Lord, do the work right now, Jesus. Lord, I praise you, God. Come on, you can't go to heaven without the Holy Ghost. You can't go to heaven without being baptized in Jesus' name. Come on, you can't go to heaven with sin in your heart and life. Come on, you can't go to heaven with excuses as to why you still have sin. Hallelujah. Come on, you can't go to heaven just by being a good person. Hallelujah. Come on. There are good people in this world that have never cussed or ranted and raved, done what you've done. But they still need the Holy Ghost just like you do. Amen. Come on. You don't need to give God excuses. You need to say, God, what do you want me to do and where do I start? Hallelujah. Isn't this right? Amen. Brother James, how far, how, how far are we on the baptistry it's ready okay sister sister uh we're, we're not gonna go just yet nobody turn loose here sister diane do y'all have towel and clothes and things like that uh, amen uh, we're gonna get ready to baptize sister violet here in just a little bit uh, sister hannah do we want is the children ready all right y'all the rest of you can be seated we're gonna let the children do their uh, scripture and their song, and uh, and then we will we will move on with the service.